In this video, we will talk about Monte Carlo methods. Let's try and solve this problem. So, first of all, last time we talked about the uniform distribution and the way to generate it. And we used this command. Uh, uniform empty round gives random numbers uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. If we want those numbers to be distributed between another interval a and b, then we can linearly rescale them using this relation x equals a plus b minus a times u, where u is distributed between 0 and 1. So in this case, x will be distributed between a and b uniformly. You can also calculate the mean and variance of this x, and these should be a plus b over 2 and b minus a squared over 12, respectively. And uh, you can check those numbers and check that um, you have generated these samples correctly. The exercise is to write code using the random library to generate two random variables, x and y, each of which is independently distributed uh, as a uniform uh, distribution between minus 1 and 1. And then check whether the radius of a circle x squared plus y squared is lower than 1. Uh, and you should repeat this n times for some larger integer n. And then let's suppose that m is the number of times where those points fall inside the unit circle. Then if we calculate this ratio for m over n, this should tend to a well-known number, uh, which would correspond to the area of this circle. Um, so let's try this and see what that number converges to. So the procedure that I just described is one example of a Monte Carlo method. Monte Carlo methods are ways of calculating expectations or integrals using random numbers. Exact methods may not be possible in those cases. Deterministic approximations may be less efficient. And uh, the name Monte Carlo refers to the use of randomness. And it's named after the casinos in Monte Carlo. So the exercise we just talked about involves generating independently a number x uniformly distributed between minus 1 and 1 and another independent random number also randomly distributed uniformly between minus 1 and 1. Then we check if uh, x and y are within the unit circle. That means uh, the radius x squared plus y squared um, that's the radius squared. Uh, we check if that is within the radius of the circle, which is one. And we do this n time, n times, and uh, if m is the number of the points that fall within that unit circle, um, then we can look at the quantity 4m over n and look at what that converges to. So when we generate points, randomly uh, between minus 1 and 1 and the first we set that to be the x-coordinate the other one will be the y-coordinate that means all these points will fall randomly inside this box um, of size 2 by 2 so these will be uniformly distributed inside this square now the region with x squared plus y squared lower than 1 is a unit circle. Uh, so we look at the proportion of the points that fall in this circle. Um, and the proportion of those points will be equal to the ratio of the area of the circle divided by the, by the area of the square. Now, the radius of the unit circle is 1, so the area is p 
pr squared where r is 1 so that's simply equal to p or pi uh, the area of the square as we just saw here uh, this side is equal to 2 that's 1 minus minus 1 which is 2 and then the other side is also 2 so 2 times 2 is 4 so the area of the square is equal to 4 so that means the proportion of the points that fall inside the unit uh, circle that was um, the area of the circle divided by area of the square uh, is p that's the area of the circle divided by 4 the area of the square square um, so that's p divided by 4 um, so in the exercise we asked not from the number m over n but from the number 4m over n which should converge to the number p so this simulation uh, is a Monte Carlo estimate of the value of P. Now, more generally, let's suppose we want to calculate a one-dimensional integral estimate. So suppose we want to calculate the estimate of this integral of f of x from a to b. How can we do this using Monte Carlo methods? let's suppose that f of x is non-negative and bounded then we could generate points randomly as shown here and count what proportion of those points fall under the curve f of x let's suppose that c is the maximum of f of x in the interval um, a to b then we can generate points on the x-axis randomly distributed um, between a and b so this will be the x-coordinates and we can also generate some points let's call them w uh, on the on this y-axis and that can be uniformly distributed between 0 and the number c which is the maximum of the function then we will count the number of points that will have uh, w lower or equal to f of x. These will be the points under the curve. And if we look at the proportion of the points that fall under the f of x and divided by the total number of points, um, we should get an estimate of that integral. So, in particular, let's generate um, n points in this way um, with the coordinates x and w. And let's suppose that the number of points that fall out below the curve f of x is equal to m. Then the proportion m over n approximates the ratio of the area under f which is the integral i and the area of the rectangle we sampled from so the area of the recta re uh, rectangle is um, b minus a that's this side times c which is this side so that's b minus a times c we call that a um, so if we divide i divided by a so that's the area under the curve divided by the area of the rectangle uh, for a large number of points this should approximate the number of points under the curve divided by the number of points inside the rectangle so we can simply solve this equation for i and then we have i equals ma over n uh, where a is uh, the area of the rectangle which is b minus a times c uh, the method that I just described is called the hit and miss integral estimate now because we're dealing with randomness these points uh, will 
approach closer and closer the integral that we're looking for, but they will not be exactly equal to the integral. They will be uh, randomly distributed close to the exact value. In particular, you can calculate uh, this distribution of the hit and miss estimator. Um, the probability that any single point is under the curve f of x is um, the area i divided by a. Uh, so that's the area under the curve divided by the area of the rectangle. So that's i over a, and that's the probability, obviously. Um, that means the total number of the points under the curve uh, which equals m uh, is binomially distributed with probability p and a total number of points n. The expectation value of this distribution, the binomial distribution, is n times p and the variance is n times p times 1 minus p. Now, the expectation value of this integral um, is the expectation value of a m divided by n. Um, now, we can pull out a and n because these are constants. Uh, so we get a over n times the expectation value of n. Now, as discussed here, the expectation value of m uh, is n times p. So uh, we have a divided by n times n, and then p is equal to, to i over a, as discussed here. So we put uh, p equals i over a, and the n cancels out, the a cancels out, and then we get i. That means this is an unbiased estimate uh, as an estimator of i. We can also look at the variance, and again, uh, the variance um, is calculated like this. So a over n, a and n are constants, so they can be pulled out, and so we're left with the variance of m, and the variance of m is uh, n times p times one minus p. That's the variance of the binomial distribution, and this number, as shown earlier. Uh, is equal to a minus i over n. Uh, so again, we simply use this formula here, n times p times 1 minus p, and plug in i over a in place of p. So it's simple algebra, and the end result is this. So we have i times a minus i divided by n. Um, that means the variance decreases proportionally to 1 over n. So um, it's inversely proportional to n as n increases. Uh, that means that the standard deviation decreases uh, as 1 over square root of n. Now, this method is easy to analyze, but it can be improved. Uh, for example, here the function f of, x, f of x needs to be bounded and we have to be able to find the maximum and it needs to be not negative or we need to also find the minimum and adjust the method and the precision of the method can also be improved. So in light of this, that let's discuss the mean value method. So let's suppose I want to calculate the integral of f of x uh, from a to b. Uh, let's generate n random numbers that are uniformly distributed between a and b. We can estimate this integral of i using this formula um, that uh, replaces this integral with a sum over f of x at each of those points and 
we multiply by b minus a over n. Uh, so that's essentially a form of uh, the Riemann sum uh, if you uh, take the average grid spacing uh, b minus a divided by n. So in other words, b minus a uh, is uh, this side of a rectangle and f of x divided by n is the average height of this function. So we can think of this um, as a average rectangle here with height uh, f of x or sum of f of x divided by n. Um, so that's the average height. So if we multiply the average height by the average uh, width b minus a, uh, we get an estimate of the area. So that makes sense uh, intuitively as an estimator of the area under f of x. Um, we can make this a bit more formal by calculating the expectation value of this integral. Um, again, b minus a over n are constants, uh, so we can pull those out of the integral and we're left with the expectation value um, of uh, the sum of the expectation values of f of x i. Um, now, because those are expectation values, um, uh, they will all be equal, and we have n of those. So this is just the expectation value of f of x uh, times n. So n divided by n, they cancel out. And we're left with b minus a times the expectation value of f of x. Now, x is uniformly distributed between a and b. So that means x has a PDF equal to 1 over b minus a. So this expectation value of f of x can be simply calculated as an integral of f of x times g of x dx, where g of x is the PDF for probability density function. So we substitute 1 over b minus a here. And because b minus a is a constant, it cancels out with this quantity here, with this factor, and we're left with the integral of f of x dx from a to b, which is the integral we are looking for. So that means the Monte Carlo estimate of the integral, or the mean value estimate of the integral in this case, is an unbiased estimate uh, of i. Now, if we look at the variance of the mean value estimator, we observe the following. The variance of the mean value estimator decreases in proportion to 1 over n as n increases, uh, same as the hit and miss method. However, the variance tends to be lower for the mean value method for a given value of n compared to the hit and miss method. This is because there is less randomness in the formula. It uses the value f of x directly instead of adding one with a probability proportional to f of x. So remember we directly sampled f of x um, by sampling the variable x instead of sampling both coordinates x and y as we did in the previous method. So um, because we're using less uh, randomness, the formula ends up being more accurate. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching.